Thanks, Ken Corley. Taoiseach, this evening, Dáil Éireann will debate a motion asking for the government to lobby the ECB and the European Commission to destroy the promissory note bonds of 28 billion euro. Now, you don't normally speak in the private member's business, so I wanted to take the opportunity to get your thoughts. In February, as you know, a 28 billion IOU from the Irish people to Anglo-Irish Bank was converted into a 28 billion euro IOU from the Irish people to the Central Bank of Ireland. And this did reduce the borrowing costs, which is to be welcomed, but we should be absolutely clear that the Irish people still owe that 28 billion euro. We raised this Taoiseach directly with the Troika recently and said, what would happen if the Irish state simply refused to pay the Central Bank of Ireland this money? And they said it was against the rules of monetary financing, which it is, and which is reasonable, because central banks can't go around printing money and handing it for free to governments in normal circumstances. However, Taoiseach, these, as you well know, are not normal circumstances, because it is the ECB who, at best, facilitated, and in my opinion, coerced, both your government and the previous government into paying tens of billions of euro of public money uh, to the creditors of private banks. And that essentially what this is what this 28 billion euro is, Taoiseach. It's a debt incurred by the Irish people to make sure that private creditors to Anglo-Irish and Irish nationwide don't have to incur any losses for their bad investment decisions. But Taoiseach, the ECB had no problem changing the rules when it came to protecting the banks. In socialising private sector losses, the ECB essentially tore up the rule back book on Europe's market-based economy. But when it comes to a workable solution to removing those losses from the shoulders of the people, the ECB hides behind the same rule book. Question, please. And so the motion before the Dáil this evening, Taoiseach, will ask for your government to lobby the ECB and the European Commission for a one-off change, an exemption to the rules of monetary financing, to allow for the Central Bank of Ireland to tear up those bonds. Now, Taoiseach, I have listened over the last three years Thank you. to your government's position. And I still don't know, I honestly still don't know whether or not you're paying the money because you think it's the least... Do you believe that these are debts properly incurred by Definitely. the Irish state and they're due? And so my question is a very simple one, Taoiseach, and it's this. Do you believe that the Irish people should pay the 28 billion which was loaned in order to make sure that creditors to Anglo-Irish Bank and Irish Nationwide didn't have to take any losses for their investments. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Well, we always live up to our obligations, uh, Deputy Donnelly. Um, position is that week after week in here for a long time, we had people raising questions about the promissory note, about the requirement to pay 3.1 billion every year to Anglo for 10 years. Uh, the government in our negotiations through the Department of Finance and the central bank in its negotiations with the, with the European Central Bank arrived at a position where this has been moved out to 2038. Uh, we don't have any comments now about the, uh, the 3.1 billion that was required to be borrowed and paid in respect of Anglo each year. Uh, the court has handed down its judgment in a 68-page judgment today uh, in favour of the state. Um, I'd point out to you that, that, uh, that the decision uh, of acceptance by the ECB of Ireland's position here has improved our position, obviously, um, has allowed for uh, further assistance in respect of the reduction of the interest rates and the extension of the, uh, the loans that were, uh, that were taken out. And uh, I'm sure you're quite well aware of the independently verified figures from the Central Statistics Office today, uh, showing 58,000 jobs created in the past uh, 12 months, uh, the drop in the unemployment rate um, to um, below 13%, uh, which is significant in the in the uh, signs of confidence in different sectors of the economy. Uh, I hope that that can be improved upon in 2014. And the government will be opposing the private members' uh, business this evening. Um, and we we move on to um, to uh, grow our economy and provide opportunities and jobs for our people. At the end of the day, Deputy Donnelly, you know as well as I do, uh, that what people need here are opportunities for employment, opportunities for work, and opportunities for job. And that's where government, we're meeting our obligations, will continue to, um, to uh, work towards. Clearly, the decision of the 29th of June last year in respect of the ESM still stands. And that's a matter uh, that will be negotiated through banking union, supervision, capital four directors, and is part of a big agenda in front of us.
Deputy Donnelly, one minute. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Taoiseach. Taoiseach, just to be clear so that everybody understands, we have not avoided borrowing $3 billion a year for the next 10 years. What we did instead was borrow $28 billion this year. It just so happens that we borrowed the $28 billion this year at a lower interest rate than we borrowed the $3 billion in subsequent years, hence the lower cost of funding. But let's be under no illusion. We issued a bond to the Central Bank of Ireland. That means we borrowed the money this year. Taoiseach, there seems to be a conspiracy of silence around the promissory note bonds. I asked Minister Noonan to identify the bondholders, or to take steps to identify them, and he refused to do that. I asked Minister Noonan to present an estimate to the House of the savings for the promissory note bond restructure. He said it was too complicated to do. I asked recently for an, uh, for an amount per bank that was already guaranteed on the night of the bank guarantee, under the 100,000 guaranteed, and I'm told that it's commercially sensitive. We're not allowed to know, the Irish Parliament is not allowed to know Question, how much you... money we guaranteed on the night of the guarantee. And Taoiseach, with respect, you have completely avoided the question. It's again the same thing. My question is very simple. My question is, regardless of whether or not it can be achieved, what we are asking is that the Irish government requests an exemption so the bonds can be destroyed. Thank you. But before that can be done, it's very important that Dáil Éireann knows whether or not you believe that the Irish people, regardless of whether they end up paying Thank you, money, Deputy. whether or not the Irish people should have to pay that money to cover the bad investments for Anglo and Irish nationwide. Thank you. Thank you. I you think you might have done things differently uh, had, had the opportunity a number of years ago. That wasn't the case. Uh, and given the circumstances that we were faced with, I think the... Uh, the government, uh, the Minister for Finance, the Minister for Public Expenditure and the Central Bank here uh, put a very cogent uh, case uh, to the European Central Bank in respect of the decision made which was announced here uh, some time ago. Uh, I'm sure that the, uh, the borrowing requirements would have been produced with the accounts when the promissory note was first put forward by, I think, by the, um, by the uh, late Minister for Finance. Um, but insofar as, uh, insofar, as, insofar as government are concerned, um, the finance bill is on again tonight. Your private member's business is on tonight. Minister for Finance will be here to answer any detailed questions that you have in that regard. That completes leaders' questions for today.